All right, then welcome to the April 30th Select Board meeting. This meeting is called to order at 632. We look uh, unusual tonight because, not because we're unusual looking, but because uh, we're in a different place. We are at the band room uh, at the middle school as our pre-town meeting meeting place. Um, in keeping with our town meeting plans, we do not do public comment when we're here because our meetings are so brief, but we do have several things too. So we'll get right started with our 630 item, which is our third quarter budget update. And we have finance director Sam, Sandy Pooler and comptroller Sonia Aldrich here to talk about this with us. Uh, for folks who are following along at home, the memo from them is in our online web packet. So, welcome. Thank you for coming. And, uh, uh, thank you. I also brought paper copies if anybody in the audience wants one. Uh, so, we are three quarters of the way through the year, and uh, this is the report uh, detailing our expenditures and revenues so far. Um, quickly, I would say that we're basically on schedule. Uh, we've collected 79% of our revenue so far to date. Um, some of that has to do with some timing issues, some things uh, come in a little early, some things a little late, but basically we're on schedule. Um, I'll just review, I won't go through the entire memo, but there are two or three things I want to note for the select board and for uh, people at home who may be reading the memo there. Um, the first item here is the uh, golf course. Um, we've only collected about a little less than half of our projected revenue, but given what their schedule is and the fact that it will collect much revenue over the winter, that's to be expected. And in fact, they had an uh, earlier opening this year and in previous years, so they're off to a good start. And I think we're uh, feeling pretty good about the operations over there. Um, miscellaneous, uh, well, investment income, there's always a timing issue as to when um, things get booked. Um, and when we get our bank statements, they always come in after the end of the quarter. So we are tracking those. We think those are uh, on schedule two, but it's not reflected in this report. And again, that's just the timing of when those reports come out. Um, I'll skip down to motor vehicle excise tax, because that's one of uh, a significant source of revenue. Um, we've been looking at the collection so far to date. They are also on schedule. We looked at the average bill from this year compared to average bills from previous years. And again, uh, we're comparable. We know um, generally there have been an uptick in automobile sales nationwide. And um, we expect to see that continue to be a strong source of income. Um, the next area I want to highlight is hotel, motel, and the meals tax. Uh, hotel, motel is at 69% uh, collected, the meals tax is at 85 percent collected um, and i think <clears throat> this is a very positive result it shows on the meals tax side that they've been a lot of good activity, <clears throat> restaurant activity in town uh, on the hotel motel tax uh, given that this is uh revenue through february and um, the lord jeff only opened in january uh, we expect to see that come back strong after the remainder of the year uh, <clears throat> and so I think it's a significant source of income, and certainly people can see the result of what that goes into do those local options. Um, pretty much everything else is on target, but it's interesting that our penalty and interest income is up, and that's, I think, because the Treasurer's Office has been much more systematic about um, keeping track of um, what's due for people and sending out notices to people on their property taxes when, when they fall for my report. So that's why that is in the schedule. Property taxes are exactly what they should be as the state aid. On the expenditure side, um, again, we've spent slightly less than three quarters of our budget, uh, three quarters of the way of the year. Way the year. Um, there are two areas where I think spending is ahead of schedule and may require a reserve fund transfer at the end of the year are legal services and veteran services. Um, legal services because, uh, partly because of our activity uh, on the solar project, which is something that we haven't had in the past and uh, we won't have the same level again next year, so it's like a one-time flip. Um, and then veterans, as you know, uh, it's very hard to predict that. Um, in some ways, the fact that we're ahead of schedule is a good thing because it shows that our veterans agent is doing a good job reaching out to people who need these services, 
people are starting to come back from uh, the, the wars abroad, and we've seen an uptick in some of the uh, activity there. Um, so we will be tracking that carefully, and as I say, there may be a need to do an end of the year transfer. Um, everything else is uh, been pretty much on schedule. There's just some timing issues with things like employee benefits because we can pay our Hampshire County Retirement Board assessment up front this year, uh, as we did last year, and we got about a 2% discount on that. Um, and uh, so, I, as I say, everything else is pretty much on schedule. Uh, we will be uh, within the general fund. One of the articles that we've taken up tonight, which you've already heard about, is transferring money out of the general fund into um, public safety and uh, community services to fully fund <coughs> the bargaining agreements that uh, have been settled. So uh, that will change some of the spending percentages a little bit, but overall purpose of that transfer is just to make the budgets whole in those areas so that we can fully fund the collective bargaining agreements that we've settled on. Um, finally, just a word about uh, our four enterprise funds. Um, those are uh, <coughs> sewer, water, and solid waste. Um, I think they're actually doing quite well. I'm pleased with the revenue we're getting in the solid waste fund now. Transportation fund, as we mentioned, that that media report is a little bit uh, behind some of the others. Uh, they've still collected 81% uh, of their revenue. We did see a little bit of lag in ticketing and meter revenue earlier in the year as we were sort of looking out some of the kinks on the, the new systems. And, um, but actually, our um, provider changed uh, the internet system that they were using for the handhelds that we write tickets. There have been a lot of problems with those in the past. They now work quite well, so I'd like to let all the people at home know that we are able to now accurately and fully track who's owed a ticket and who's mm -hmm. be writing us. So please put money in the meeting. <laughs> uh, with that, I just uh, again want to uh, thank Sonia and her staff for the excellent job that they do in filing uh, this information and uh, giving us easy to understand uh, financial records uh, that are also uh, accurate and timely. So with that, if there are any questions, we have to answer. Thank you very much, and thank you for the memo, which provides a really clear way to track this every quarter um, and helps make us all kind of more uh, uh, connected to what's going on and um, informed about it. So it's excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know Ms. Stein has a question. Um, actually, I have two. But one is I noticed that um, our street lights are costing less. I think they were like 36 or 37 percent, and I think that's right. Uh, I don't have my, my phone in front of me, but I was wondering if there was some um, reason for that. There we go. Street lights. Um, um, oh, yeah. And this is in the back in extended, right? Yeah. And I just wondered if there were better bulbs or if we were having any solar-powered street lights or... I think this is more like... I, I wish tiny. I could say that were true. Yeah, but it's a tiny question. thing. Okay. And right. the other question <coughs> was, um, we've heard a lot about the uh, tickets that cost $300 per student for uh, violations of certain bylaws. I wondered where that's reflected in the budget. Um, that comes in under... Uh, <laughs> Fines and forfeitures. If okay, you look at this page here. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be sure I knew. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Other questions or comments <coughs> from the select board about the budget update? <coughs> Ms. Burke. <coughs> just asking for the part where you reassure us that the mm -hmm. veterans' budget that we're about to be looking at at town meeting will probably be sufficient given that we'd expected it to go up. Um, that we won't need to increase it yet for FM13. Right. I, uh, I think it will be, um, you know, to be honest, it depends. Um, but we did go yeah. over it with the veterans agent and staff. Um, again, if it does go up, 
it would obviously come back to you for that. We will get 75% reimbursement sure. for any increase. Um, so um, it's our best educated estimate. But it still stands for now. That's yeah. it. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions or comments on the budget? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything you want to add, Mr. Uh, just to echo uh, the overall summary. We're basically on track. Uh, there are just a couple of areas we're watching very closely at this point, and to the extent there are any shortfalls, we expect them to be manageable. Um, so I think <coughs> that's good news, and uh, also good work by Sandy, Sonia, and all of the departments, department heads as they manage uh, their budgets over the course of the year. Thank you. And so I would just note that when we talk about, sometimes it comes up that we budget a million dollars more than, than we end up needing every year. Um, we don't budget that. That's the, that's the differential. Um, and we're lucky to end up a million dollars more or less to the positive each year. It, it's <clears> in these documents that you see how very closely to budget we are tracking on each of these items. And, uh, and so it's a great way for folks to pay attention. Thank you. Thank you for the memo again. And uh, thank you for coming in this evening. Okay, our next item is uh, voting and assigning select board positions on town meeting warrant articles. This is, tonight is a continuation of a discussion that we had uh, <coughs> on April 9th, was our first discussion, I believe. Um, and this is about Article 29. Uh, this is a petition article about sharing information with federal agencies. <coughs> and at that time, um, we had the petition article in front of us, the recommendation to amend it by the petitioners to clarify that it be um, not all federal agencies to, to not be sharing information with, but just the, um, the immigration folks. Um, and, uh, and at that time, we had concerns that, uh, first of all, we didn't have an updated opinion from town council that was, that was directly responsive to the amendment at that time, um, as well as from the police chief, who had also offered a memo uh, to us on that, but was not addressing the um, specifically the amended part. Um, in the meantime, we have gotten, and I hope you've received town council's opinion that just came through yesterday and it was on the uh, town website. Have you folks seen that? Do we have a hard copy of that? Uh, I don't have an act. Well, do you want to just take all these? <coughs> they are not we can share. Yeah, we, we yeah. still can share. Yeah. Yeah. They're also posted on the meeting packet, select tonight's select board meeting packet. Miss um, Brewer didn't get a copy, a hard copy with her stuff. Tonight. Oh, I got two of something. Uh, Wait a minute, John. Oh, you did? Oh. Not the top letter, but the uh, developed patch letter. We're in a funny configuration yeah, here tonight. Uh, Everything's oh, a little out of whack. Okay. But it was so that's got, some yeah. stuff, um, but not the letter. I think I have two. Thank you. I mean, I did see it, you know, but okay. I don't have a hard copy. So that, uh, as Mr. Meesandy mentioned, that, that letter is part of our the web packet online. So folks who are following the line home can read that also. Um, in a nutshell, the, uh, the opinion says that um, town council is concerned that the, uh, I guess, two things, if I can try and sum this Sorry. up. Now our I'm table's moving. <laughs> Everything's going crazy here. <laughs> um, that uh, first of all, that uh, we can't make a local action that would compel the federal government, um, that there's a, a law of supremacy involved there. I don't speak the legal language, but, but he cites that. Um, such that basically we can't compel the federal government. We can't kind of compel upwards. They can compel downwards, but not the other way around. Um, and the other is that he believes that the reference in the petition, the specific, the specific um, code, uh, the CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, I yes. uh, Code of Federal Regulations, is not meaning what the petitioners intend it to mean. Um, so he is saying that the, that the reference that they make actually refers to a much larger part of the CFR that talks about um, the a state's plan to deal with, I just need the language, I'm sorry. Um, not another copy of the uh, council's. Not another hard copy on us. I'm sorry. Uh, 
that the, the, the larger section deals with a state's ability to create a criminal history record information <coughs> plan and not a, a, a local municipality informing the federal government. It would be a municipality informing the state's created plan. Right. Um, so those are, the, those are the two main concerns coming from council. Um, and I know that the chief had other concerns related to potential uh, uh, vulnerabilities that this might create for for the town as far as grant opportunities and other things. Would you like to speak to that at all? Yeah, just briefly, specifically, the, uh, <clears throat> the state grants that we receive have specific language in there in the contracts that mandate that we report arrest information to them. So to, the, to the state police information network, who in turn probably sends that forward to federal agencies. So if we were restricted in, in, in and who we could send that information to that would potentially eliminate any state grants we could get. And over the last five years, we've received upwards of $260,000 in state funded grants, executive office of public safety stuff, you know, from alcohol enforcement grants, um, speeding grants, you know, bike safety type stuff, you know, a lot, pretty much anything that relates to uh, issues of safety. Um, we've pretty much applied for everything and we've usually received. Some, some amount of funding through the state. You know, the federal grants that we receive, I, I don't know what the potential would be in, in losing that, but there's the concern that we would lose that. You know, our domestic violence grant uh, was one that we had most recently received. We did that, uh, an initiative with the University Every Woman's Center and received a pretty substantial grant. And we're in the process of rewriting that grant, uh, looking to double the funds in that, upwards of $300,000. So. You know, that's a concern of mine that we would be tabled, if you would, or, or singled out to not receive federal funding if we were to in some way um, you know, go down that road. Uh, it's, it's been done in the past at a federal level, but it's usually involved traffic type stuff. Uh, if, in the past, if states didn't abide by the 55 mile per hour speed limit, you were in, in effect um, you know, not, no longer allowed to get funding for that. And if you didn't reach a certain percentage of uh, uh, people using seatbelt usage, you were denied funding for that. So, you know, there is past history, although it's been very specific to motor vehicle type information or, or, or funding that had been denied in the past. So I guess that would, that would be my concern as far as finances. Okay, and I'll let you rebut all this in a moment. Um, so also, um, I've had a number of conversations with uh, Andy Steinberg, who's the chair of the Finance Committee and former executive director of uh, Western Mass Legal Services. And he's very concerned about um, kind of the exposure that this would give the town as far as having <clears throat> a bylaw that, uh, that we would have to defend against, that it could put us in the position of either needing to sue the federal government in order to make the bylaw take effect, or to defend someone who believed that they would not be, if, a, if a, an illegal immigrant was detained in Amherst, that they believed that their information would not be forwarded, um, that they might sue the town to, uh, to implement the um, to implement the bylaw. So, so we have a lot of information that the bylaw is, is potentially unenforceable, that it doesn't do what you potentially want it to do, um, and that it puts us in, in some other positions of vulnerability. Um, before I open it up to, to comments and questions and rebuttal from you, I, I, think it's, I think it's pretty clear that the select board wants to be able to support the concept behind this. But we also want to do it responsibly and in a way that is practical. Um, so, so given the information that we have at the moment, I can't speak for the select board, we haven't discussed this yet, but I'm finding it difficult to um, to balance the desire to support it with all of the problematic information that we have about it. So now I'll, oh, at first I'm sorry, I should let select board and town manager talk and then I'll let you folks talk. Um, would you mind if I let Ms. No, Sandy thanks. speak first? I would just uh, say very clearly that I share all of those concerns and, uh, uh, you know, town council's opinion is helpful uh, in that, um, Whatever you think about the merits of the bylaw, and I quite frankly think Secure Communities Act overreaches. Uh, uh, I share the 
view that our governor has on this issue, that uh, in practice it's not been uh, doing only what it uh, has been described as intended to do, that the reality has been a little bit different. Uh, so those concerns are real. The question is, what's the best approach as a town uh, about this? And I think the best approach is not adopting a bylaw, but uh, having town meeting express an opinion in the form of a resolution, uh, we can join a growing number of voices from communities uh, uh, across the nation expressing concerns, which will help uh, influence future policy uh, and legislative discussion at the federal level uh, going forward. So the question is how to translate uh, a petition uh, crafted in the form of a bylaw that we think is unenforceable and creates all these other issues, uh, unintended, um, in a way that is helpful. And so I know we have examples from the petitioners and others about some resolutions that have been adopted elsewhere, including Northampton, that I think there are pieces of those that uh, could be incorporated into a, uh, into a substitute motion, possibly. Uh, first, Ms. Brewer, and then Mr. Hayden. I wonder if the town manager would also speak to um, a brief exchange I had with him via email regarding some uh, proposals, perhaps, on the uh, town meeting drafting discussion group talking about the, the possibility that one could interpret the bylaw to mean that it was simply requiring the town manager to send a letter. And so what was the big deal? And um, he had a response to that that I don't have. <laughs> 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 and now I'm going to, yeah. it's been a great year. I'm going <laughs> to quickly cull it from my memory. Um, yeah, um, town council uh, earlier on has offered an opinion about uh, the authority of town meeting and how it applies to giving instruction to the town manager and uh, that it doesn't doesn't do that, and that the the uh, town government act makes clear the uh, authority on uh, policy setting. Um, trying to get the right phrase out of here. <clears throat> I will find it and come back to it. In general, it can't. It, town meeting can't compel you to do something either. Town meeting doesn't have authority over you. What it could do is request that you do yes. something, but it can't. Um, yes. It can't. Well, according to direct. the town government. Act, according to the town that's government. That's not something. Right. Can do. Correct. Ms. Brewer. And again, along those lines, to follow up on that, then uh, thus expecting what the next comment will be, which is uh, further than be it resolved that the select board direct the Amherst town manager to do that. And again, that's not the way we write bylaws. We don't write bylaws that say the select board will tell the town manager to do this one thing one time. That just doesn't seem to me to fit in with the spirit of the rest of the way we do our bylaws, which granted are written over many, many different years and have different types of language in them, but it doesn't sound like the others. Right, and, and also, as far as the chain of command goes, town meeting can't direct the select board they to can do ask. So, so Right, everybody right. can request that people right. do things. Okay, Mr. Hayden. Um, <clears throat> I just, just a more general um, set of thoughts have been sort of turning around in my mind since this petition was first brought to my attention. Um, it seems that there are two objects to it. Um, the, the grander object, of course, is to uh, stand up on the, the national political stage and say, this is not right. This rule is not right. The, 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 it's, the results of its enforcement are not right. We have some suspicion about the reason it came into being, and they're not right. Um, uh, and, that's, and that's one set of things. The other, other set of issues that come to mind is whether or not um, People in Amherst who don't look like me feel comfortable when a policeman is around. And um, so in the first case, um, 
as we're about to find out a little bit later in this town meeting session, getting the T's crossed and the I's dotted correctly are the only way that anything like this could be effective. So there's some fundamental problems with this, just as far as that's concerned. But also, even if that was all correct, um, I'm not sure that um, going directly as a town meeting or even as a select board to the governor wouldn't be a more effective, or our representatives. Uh, wouldn't be a more effective way of standing out on the um, on the national political stage, although Amherst Town Meeting seems to do that just anyway. As far as the local side, um, the um, uh, the enforcement by um, our local constabulary is exemplary in its even handedness. I don't think I have heard one complaint on that. Um, and um, goodness knows there's plenty, plenty of potential for it. So, um, I, you know, I'd like to, to get up in front of town meeting and take this opportunity to say, look, you know, this is not a problem in Amherst. This may be a problem in the country, but our, our um, the bravest in Amherst are doing a good job of making everybody welcome, even students. Uh, but that's another matter. Uh, I, I don't know of anybody, I sat in the hall, because I was banished from the previous meeting, um, with the very passionate folks who were in support of this and had had a good chat with them. And that was not, never an issue. That was what? That was never an issue. Yeah. That Amherst somehow is discriminating um, against people who don't look like Mr. Wald here. Um, so um, this doesn't quite, quite get to either of those issues successfully, so for me. So can I ask the petitioners to respond? Uh, or is the select board done? Uh, maybe Mr. Chief Livingston should say a little bit more about Amherst philosophy and enforcement first. Yeah, I would just add that um, we have a pretty in-depth policy. And I think that's yes. the opportunity to see that policy and procedure that we're pretty proud of. Um, it is neither the desire um, of the Amherst police to enforce federal law. It's not our job. Um, we don't have the resources, the desire, the finances. I think the, the petition, the way it's written, is, is is well written and probably wouldn't change the way we do business in Amherst at all. Um, I have concerns about it being in a bylaw format, certainly. Um, and some of those have been expressed here, but uh, I just think it's important that, uh, that I say that, you know, as it's written, I certainly understand uh, where we're going with this, and uh, it shouldn't or will not change the way we do business in, in the town from the perspective of the police department. You know, some of these things will be straightened out and you know, what format it will be in. So. Thank you. Okay, so you've heard our concerns. Mm -hmm. um, so, so please respond to those and also think about are there ways that we can turn this into something that we all can support? Uh, and please introduce yourself for folks at home. What's that? Oh, well, please I'm introduce yourself. Uh, please introduce yourself. And I'm the petitioner, uh, but I'm very well supported by Jeff Napolitano from the AFSC. And um, he understands the issue better than I do. Uh, I just wondered, first of all, in the town council's uh, description here, uh, he says, uh, if the town wishes to adopt the bylaw, I would recommend at a minimum of the words, except as may be required by law or by a, a court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, would that change things if, if that were in the we still can't order the town manager to do anything in town meeting. So I think that it needs a little more work, and I'm thinking that maybe it could be cleaned up and put forward in the special town meeting for May 14th. I don't know if there's enough time. I mean, it's closed. It's closed. Well, we signed that warrant already. Okay, so we would need to have a special special. Uh, right. A possibility would be to call another special town meeting to consider a different warrant article, or it could be brought forward in the fall. And it's also possible that maybe minimal changes could be approved. That I, I don't know what Harrison Gregg, the town moderator, would consider within the scope of the article. It seems to me, though, that it has to be more changed more. And it's not because we don't support this but it's just that the way it got put together doesn't seem to fit quite right. Are you saying then, um, either the town manager or the chief, that if it were a resolution as opposed to the bylaws, that would make a difference? 
Uh, I think it would, and you know, the devil's in the details about the actual wording, uh, and would need to be reviewed by the moderator as well to make sure that whatever the resolution is is within the scope of the original uh, petition. That it would take away some of your concerns? Yes. Uh, take my, of mine. Of yours and other people's. A bylaw is a very um, um, formal thing to do. And as you know from the zoning articles, we are going to pour over every, every letter, every comma, we're, and every <laughs> intent and whether things have unintended consequences and whether things were, were responsibly and comprehensively put together and considered all the possible unintended consequences. I don't think that as a bylaw, this meets that currently. And I think we really need to be holding all our bylaws to kind of the same standards. We can't say that, you know, we like the intention of this bylaw. It has, it has good, good uh, intent behind it, but <coughs> it, it doesn't, it, it's kind, it, it needs a lot of work as far as the wording and the specifics to make it be a bylaw, to make it be um, enforceable. The bylaw is just not the appropriate way to do it. Really, it's a resolution. Uh, Ms. Brewer and then Mr. Napoleon. And, and I'm sorry, I don't want to cut into your time. I know we have very limited time here, but um, building off of what the town manager said, has there been discussion at all with the moderator as to is it theoretically possible to craft with the town moderator, yes, with the <laughs> to craft a resolution um, that would still fit so that it would count? You know, uh, not so yet, okay. because I'm awaiting a draft language for consideration. Okay that would be shared with the petitioner and others <coughs> and the moderator. It is theoretically possible at this point. Yes. Right, so we can't, we can't hijack their petition. Right, absolutely. This would right. have to be absolutely. something but that they are. Something right. that they were interested in, rather than just saying no. we are uh, number 29, it's probably not going to come up till Oh, I, I don't think town meeting will go that long. Okay, I would sure. I would think that this would come up um, either uh, two probably two weeks from tonight, maybe oh, maybe the mm -hmm. the, the next maybe time so Wednesday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 I think certainly weeks. Weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we may not have four of them. Yeah, so I just wanted to go down the list. I mean, the issue of whether this is, um, I think that there are lawyers um, from the ACLU that help craft us that would actually challenge um, or rebut um, some of the things that are in the opinion, but I can't say that now. I think that would be an issue for town meeting. Um, but on the, the things that I, I heard, um, regarding the state police and restricting how that might be problematic. Um, this bylaw doesn't actually restrict anything that's sent to the state police. So it, it, we're not restricting the state, state police at all. Um, we're si we're si simply, um, if it turns out to be accurate, uh, using the, the uh, Homeland Security, FBI's home regulation to limit itself. So it's not, uh, it, I mean, if, if, the, if the regulation is accurate legally, and the town council might be inaccurate, um, then what we were doing is not actually limiting what goes to the state police um, and what the state police do with, with it. Um, what we're doing is we're saying that the FBI can't do what they say they potentially can't do with it. Um, so that, I think, is, is shouldn't be a, a concern. Um, the problem with uh, a resolution is that it doesn't do anything. Um, the problem with the resolution is that you will still have folks being picked up, um, or I should say detained for us. Um, so resolutions are fine things, um, but the CFR doesn't say if you do a resolution, this will work. Um, so a resolution is symbolic and it's nice, um, but it won't actually make tangible difference for people in the town of Amherst. Um, the issue of going to reps and senators about this issue, we have lots of people are. Um, the big problem with secure communities is it isn't a piece of legislation. It's a program from the executive branch that was started by the Bush executive administration. The executive branch of the Bush administration. Um, so uh, we're going and we can go, but it's the executive branch's uh, domain, not legislatures. Um, and I hear um, I hear folks talking about exemplary police procedure. Um, I think that the policy that's on the Amherst Police Department's website is great. Um, 
I, I think it, it's good. It's really solid. It's really good. Um, the problem is that uh, Secure Communities is going to viol violate it. It won't be uh, enforceable anymore, the, uh, the bylaw. Furthermore, the bylaw regarding human rights in Amherst will be violated by Secure Communities. So you could uh, certainly argue that this is sort of getting ahead of the ball before we have that problem. And I suspect that when we have that problem, we will be in a slightly less amicable position about uh, in terms of what's happening in the town. Um, this is sort of a way to get it ahead of the ball before, before it happens. So um, it's a good policy. Um, the, the big question is um, when the federal government, as they did two months ago in New Jersey and as they did last month in Connecticut, begin to stipulate that the Amherst Police Department starts detaining people so that immigration can come by and pick folks up from the town of Amherst, um, uh, it, it's just going to be the policy. Um, and so uh, we can talk about how to deal with that now, we can talk about, uh, we can deal with it then, but at some point we're going to have to deal with it, and we're going to have to deal with the violation of the, uh, the <coughs> policy. So my concern is that on the one hand, we want to make a statement. We, we clearly all want to be able to make a statement about the, uh, about the problems with secure communities. We could go in some uncharted route, this kind of potential resolution route that would make a big statement. Or we could go this bylaw route that uh, might not be enforceable, might be kind of technically inaccurate and um, it, it, uh, found to be unviable, either by the Attorney General or by the FBI. The FBI might look at it, even if it passes the Attorney General and they say, sure, you can have whatever bylaw you want. We don't care what it says, you know, that's, that's good enough. Um, but if the FBI looks at it and says, actually, you've completely misunderstood this and you can't, you can't compel us to do anything, then the thing gets dismissed on technicalities, <coughs> multiple layers of technicalities, and then we haven't made any statement at all. The statement that we've made is that we couldn't put our our statement together in a way that, that had any teeth. Whereas if town meeting made a resounding statement of some kind that was essentially, you know, bulletproof, it did not have vulnerabilities that people couldn't dismiss and say, you know, technicality this, technicality that, then we've actually made a strong statement. So I'm afraid we kind of, you think that this is stronger, but I think that if we go down this path, it's ultimately weaker because then in the end we're left with nothing. I mean, I, I would say that if it actually passes the Attorney General's purview uh, and it convinces the two thirds of the majority of the town meeting, um, and I, I would say that is a much stronger, it, and it's a statement that would actually compel the federal government um, to back off um, folks that are suspected of being undocumented in this town. Um, and even if we lose that fight, it's a fight that's worth fighting and far more valuable um, than a symbolic resolution, which won't actually have any teeth. I see what you're saying. Okay, so what's in front of us? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wald. I mean, Please go right ahead. I just wondered what, what the options were. I mean, do we have to vote? Because we're all saying we express, strong, as far as I read it, strong support for the intentions behind this, but I'm hearing res re reservations about the form and technicalities. Do we have any options besides voting up, down, or neutral on this? I mean, are we able to take other action or to encourage alternative approaches? Um, I, I think the only kind of official actions available to us are the ones that you said. We can either recommend support, not recommend support, or take no position. We could also defer this and see if our, you're having heard our concerns, if you talk about it and want to come back with something else. Um, I think what you're hearing from us is you're not going to get majority support for the bylaw recommendation as it stands, and yet we really want to be able to support this. I think personally, at town meeting, I would have to speak pretty forcefully about this not being a bylaw. And I hope that um, I hope that, that would convince enough of town meeting to not make it pass. Because I think that, like I said, I think we have to hold our bylaws to very high standards. And, and this does not meet the standards as written. Um, I don't want to have to speak forcefully against that. And I can, I, you know, I can support a resolution, something that's just having Amherst say, you know, yes, we uh, we are joining the the chorus of so many around the state and around the country in opposing this, um, but we can't kind of let our bylaws be um, subject to just good intentions. Bylaws have to be tighter than that. Other questions or comments from select board, Ms. Brewer? At, at the risk of this coming out all wrong, 
which usually means it's better left unsaid. Um, I'm hearing it's worth the fight. And what that says to me is that if we pass the bylaw, bylaws found to be adequate in some fashion, say by the Attorney General, but the FBI doesn't agree with it, which it surely will not, um, we are then going to be in the position of legally defending this bylaw. And I'm not willing to go down that road defending this bylaw. And I, I'm not willing to put us in that position because I don't think we understand all the possibilities with the FBI, and I don't think that the ACLU attorneys do either. I think I don't want to be the test case for it. So I'm not. There's no way to make this into a bylaw that I can possibly conceive of supporting. Other questions or comments from select board? All right. Any closing? Oh, sorry, Miss Tank. Well. I guess I don't think of it as a bylaw. That's what I am having trouble with because it doesn't seem to be like any other bylaw we have. If, if, if you go through our bylaws, this is resolved for one specific thing and, and doesn't have this kind of applicability that a bylaw does. And I want very much to support it, so I am struggling enormously to like support something that doesn't seem like a bylaw, even though my heart and soul is in this. So I, that's where I'm standing. I, I can't think of another bylaw, I haven't read quite a few of them, that stated the way this one was. And that, that has actual kind of technical errors in it for how chain of command even works within town, the things we talked about, directing the town manager or whatever. Um, okay, Mr. Reese. I mean, one approach for the board to consider would be to uh, um, defer a final recommendation on the article, but ask me to come back uh, ASAP with some draft uh, suggested language for an amended uh, substitute motion, and I would make outreach in, much, in more detail. So ask, ask to make a substitute motion. Is that what you're saying? I would, asking the board to have me come back with some suggestions, and in the course of doing that, have some more substantive discussions with the petitioners about if it was in the form of a resolution, what form might it take that ideally would garner the support of the petitioners. So this wouldn't be a this wouldn't be a dueling motion. This would basically be um, if you could create something that the select board could support and that the petitioners would support instead. Right. Because really we can't be introducing uh, essentially a dueling motion from the select board. Right. Kind of Ms. Burke. Which is why I think we should not defer. I think we should take a vote on the, mo the motion to the best of our knowledge as it currently stands. And we should vote on that. And given new information, that's going to be a resolution. It's not going to be the same. It's simply not. It's not going to be a bylaw. That's a whole, it's, it's so different that hopefully it fits within the warrant. But I don't see any point in pretending that we're going to vote for a bylaw because there's, he's not going to bring us back if we buy his bylaw. Okay. So one thing that would do is kind of put a very fine point on where we are on Article 29 at all, and that might be a stronger message than we want to send at the moment. It might be, I think, more kind of cooperative to say, well, you know what, we're still working with them to try and turn this into something that we can support, as opposed to kind of going on record very early as saying, no, forget it, we reject no. it. Um, but we can't support a bylaw, we can only support a resolution. Um, I think that is the sense of the body, Ms. Stein. <laughs> I, I would certainly be much happier voting to defer and see if we can straighten out the kinks because this is something I feel very strongly about what's in there. It's just I'm not sure that this is the best format. So I'd like to see it revised. When you say defer, you mean defer to what? We would defer our position on this until we and, until we go a little further down this road, until Mr. Musanti were to come up with draft language and see if that was acceptable to you, um, as opposed to taking a position pro or con right now. Other select board thoughts on this? No, that's good. 
you're yeah, I like the idea of kind of deferring, being proactive. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so continuing down this path, seeing what this turns into. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I must <laughs> insist on not being just as not being considered that not proactive. I absolutely want us to look at a resolution. We are not looking at a bylaw. That's been made perfectly clear. So we're talking about trying to seem more cooperative when the reality is we're not going to vote for a bylaw. We are hoping very much to vote for a resolution. So why on earth do we need to defer it to make it clear that we're nice? We're not, it's not about being nice and cooperative. We are still going to ask for the motion. Ms. Stein. It may still come up as an Article 29. Therefore, I don't want to say that I'm voting against it till I see what it is. We so, see what it is. You know, <laughs> that's why I will say defer. Thank so um, we already, it's not unusual for us to, to consider, um, even with this article, that the, the, the thing that we're considering at the moment, and even though I understand we're not supporting it, is uh, an amended motion. So we're basically, we're basically saying, yes, we expect them to amend it. And if it, if it were in this, this format, as presented to us as amended, our position would be X. I think this, what is going to be amended is still evolving. So if we could come to a place, and, and I don't even know if it's possible to take something that is this complicated and reword it in a way that the, that the moderator is going to think is, is acceptable at town meeting, I don't know. Um, but if it is, then we would again be sort of dealing with this amended, <coughs> the amended motion that might be put forward for Article 29. So um, I don't think there's really harm. I understand what you're saying. I don't think there's harm, though, in putting off the decision one way or the other about that. And that does seem to be kind of the, the opinion of the body. Um, are you folks good with that? We're going to defer our decision. I don't think we need a, a motion on that. I think it's by consensus. Unless right. you'd like no. to be on record, no. we could vote. I, I sure. think I am already. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you want yes, to, yes, I see that. Vote, I, 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 just need, I just need. I just need. I. I like things to be definitive from the standpoint. That's not going to work. Let's move on to the next step. Therefore, we need to make sure that we get this resolution worked on fairly quickly. Since some of us like to imagine we're not going to be in town meeting. June. So, um, right. in addition to all the other things that have to be done, this is now a new thing on the plate that has to be done. Correct. This is so. the optimist that town meeting will be over sometime in May. <laughs> She's agreeing that not until June, please. Six. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So let me restate what I think we're doing right now is we're not taking a position on this right now. Um, Mr. Musanti is going to try and come up with draft language for a resolution and um, that would be that, that the chief, that town council, and that the petitioners, having heard all of this, that they can all support. Um, if we can do that, then we will come back and have this conversation again. Um, and that's going to happen as soon as possible. Um, did I miss anything? Ms. Brewer? Can we just ask for an update for like next month? Yeah. Yes. So then we'll have the next Monday. How quickly town council can work on it, how quickly they can look at it. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you folks have any other questions or comments for us about this? Well, I certainly want to say that I appreciate the strong sentiment that's been expressed here about the, about the direction of this. And uh, this is our concern, obviously. And it's certainly better to have a deferment than to have a vote against it, which I gather was the alternative. So in that sense, fine. But and I hope that the town manager will be able to have some time to work on this, because I don't want to defer this to fall town meeting. I don't. I, I, I think it's pretty urgent to do that. So um, if you have, you will be in touch with us. Then. Yes. No you want to say Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for coming in again to, okay. to kind of hash this yeah. out with us and uh, moving forward. OK, so we are supposed to adjourn uh, now, but we'll take like three more minutes if we possibly can. I think the most important thing we need to do is um, motions. Yeah, we do have a couple motions. All right, first we'll do those, and then we'll we just have a couple information updates we have to deal with. Um, let's see.
dumpster request? Actually, so the dumpster yeah. request. Let's talk about this for a moment before we do the motion. So we've had a request from uh, the Hope Church for a temporary dumpster on Gaylord Street, but we have a recommendation from the fire chief to uh, reject this because it's not safe. Um, I've had some further discussion with uh, Thank you for coming in. Uh, the fire chief. Um, he does have concerns about the narrow street, um, but as a last resort, uh, uh, he thinks this could work out. We're still working with the contractor. Their preferred approach is to try to make arrangements with the butters, mm -hmm. one of the butters off of the uh, street. Uh, I have not heard definitive word yet uh, whether th that could work, but my recommendation is you, you pass the motion allowing the dumpster, but we will continue to work with the contractor mm -hmm. to um, see if, if the butter land can be used, and if not, have the street location be uh, as short a period as possible. Should we say, uh, should we add language that says pending approval by the fire chief for, of the plans or something like that? Uh, sure. Yep. So that way, that's sure. we're certain. Okay. I move that the select board approve the request of Bowery and Schmidt Incorporated on behalf of Hope Community Church to allow placement of a 30 yard dumpster within on street, on street parking on the south side of the townway directly in front of the Hope Community Church, 16 Gaylord <clears throat> Street, Amherst, MA, beginning May 1st. 2012 through June 30th, 2012, as pending approval from the fire chief. Perfect. Second. For the discussion. Oh, they were saying I. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Walton. <laughs> Did you want to? Just, <coughs> just briefly to note that I mean, these are, this is complicated. I'm glad that the fire chief is on top of it, but we have also, through the Community Preservation Act, been attempting to help the church to uh, repair and modernize and preserve its structures. So it's nice that we can cooperate and try to make the. Yep. help this, this work out. Thank you for adding that. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Okay. Text. I move that the select board approve the ac application of a Jeep Fuller Leopard MA for, his, for transfer of his license to drive taxi slash chauffeur on behalf of Ambassador Taxi to Gotta Go Taxi. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Special liquor license. I move that the select board approve three applications for wine and malt special licenses from Brenda Ryan Newton, Director of Catering, on behalf of the University of Massachusetts for receptions to be held at the Eisenberg School of Management Atrium on May 2nd, 2012, from 2.30 to 6 p.m and at Durfee Gardens on May 11, 2012, from 12 to 4 p.m., and on May 12, 2012, from 3.30 to 7 p.m. Second. For the discussion, Mr. Hayden. Uh, 2.30 to 6.30? 6.30, sir. On the second. 6.30 for the, the document the is what the chief that. approved. The application says 6.30. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, that would be 6.30. Yes. <laughs> see, it's not just yes. We'd hate to cut them off early. That's uh, for the discussion. Have enough money. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. Um, so we need to adjourn. Um, the, there's information in the packet about the special town meeting that will be held on May 14th. We can't talk about it because we don't have time, but the memo uh, is in the packet. It's very explanatory. Everything you need to know for the select board and people at home. Um, additionally, my expectation is we don't want to meet Wednesday unless something happens tonight such that we need to. So I will be canceling the Wednesday meeting unless something happens tonight at town meeting that changes that. We're all good with that? Imagine my all right, then we will meet here again uh, at 6.30 on Monday, May 7th. And this meeting is adjourned without objection at 7.25. Thank you very much.